Howdy, Possum Patty here, and today I am making Franken pages for my Halloween journal, my haunted house Halloween journal. Come on along. First the cover, and then we will talk about Franken Pages. The last time you saw this cover, I had put this paper, the sort of sparkly starry night with this silhouette of trees there, and I had put three pieces of paper, and that was it. And I said I was going to take some black material and put it around the edge, which I did. All I did was take this cheap black material and rip it into strips. I wasn't too fussy about lining it up exactly all the same size. All I did was put some of this Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength glue stick because it works really good on material. You know, went along the edge, took the, uh, took the material, strip, laid it down, folded over the other side, and did the same thing on the other side. I did the top and the bottom first. Then I did the sides. And then I cut two skinny ones to put, you know, where the where it bends right there. On the spine. On the inside, I put this nice scary skull picture and this serpent wallpaper. This reminds me of wallpaper. The serpent looking wallpaper reminds me of something like maybe from Harry Potter. <laughs> so you can see where I bent that material on this side and just glued it down. So very simple, very simple. And this paper is from Naturally Scary. Michael's paper pad. Very fun. Now the outside of the cover will not be done until I work on the house. And this is going to get glued right to the front and it is going to peek up over the top. I planned it that way. I have to put something behind the windows though before I glue it down. And I want to put like little curtains and things peeking out. And somebody was suggesting some glow in the dark paint. I do have Glow in the Dark Mod Podge and Black Light Mod Podge too. I might throw some of that on here maybe. And then I was thinking maybe some black sequins as roof tiles or putting something around the windows or the door. Oh, something, I don't know, maybe making stripes like there's, um, you know, some kind of siding on the house. But I'll be working on that. What I felt like doing, though, was working on signatures. Now, when I say Franken pages, I know some people make Franken paper, but that's a different story. Um, I was taking different things and sewing them together to make the pages. Now, the size of the journal, because I had to make it big enough to fit the house, is I have rulers here somewhere because I've got stuff spread across the whole room. I went down to the magic basement and brought up a bunch of junk. So this is about nine inches. So pages should be about eight and a half. And you know, I have scrapbooking paper, which is 12 by 12. So you can't just fold it and get two eight and a half pieces of paper. It doesn't work like that. So I decided I would make up Franken papers. Now the first page, and I knew I wanted to use some paper bags. And this is a Dollar Tree paper bag. This I got at Michael's the other day. And it is burlap with painted leaves on it. 
And I was like, oh, that is very cool. I could probably do something with that in a journal. And it was like 70% off or something. The Halloween stuff, 60, 70% off. And there are 10 feet in here, I believe. I think it's a 10-foot roll. So what I did was I took a piece and I folded it over. And I put a little of the paper bag in there and I just sewed this onto the paper bag and then I sewed around the edge and I'm like, this is different. I like it. I like it. I know it's not spooky because there's a skull. Everything in this journal is not going to be spooky. Haunted House is just a cover. When I do my October Halloween um, journaling, it's not all gruesome stuff. It is fun and funny and maybe a little spooky, but that's it. So this was the first Franken page I made by sewing burlap to a Dollar Tree bag. And then I was wanted to get crazy. I said, let me just grab all kinds of things and see what I can make. So I used some paper from the pack, and this is from Michael's Midnight Garden. And what I did with this one was I folded it so that one side was larger and one side was smaller, so it gives me a small page and a larger page. And then I grabbed Mr. Possum's packaging from his apple cider donuts. And I folded the end of the box up where you can see the wonderful donut there. And I put a stitch there. So this is a pocket. So I've got a window and a pocket down there. And this is from another Michael's pack. And what I did, you can see here, is I, I sewed these three things together. And then the other side of this. So I made this one really big. Okay, so this is the full like eight and a half inches. But then that made the other side really small. So I took a paper from an old paper pack I have and I sewed it on here. And then I took a piece of Crafter Square Dollar Tree ribbon from maybe last year. And I sewed it on, but I was going to sew it on this side. I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll just leave that open. And I just left it open. And here's the other side of the donut package. But I left a little donut here. That could be like a little tuck. I might cover this with something. And then you have the big side of that. So this is going to get hand sewn into the journal, but I just decided to sew these three things together because I had sewn <laughs> these together. Uh, I got this junk mail and it was just this really nice craft colored window envelope and I cut it up there and I cut it on the side over here. I added a piece of deli paper, uh, a small piece of that marbled Scrapbook paper. This is from an old pack of paper I had. I figured, let me go into some of the older packs and just pick out a couple of sheets and play with it. So you can see that I Frankenstein these two pages together because I made this one quite large. So this side was small. So I did sew this piece onto here. And then I made it long enough to fold over instead of cutting it. Then I took another piece and I sewed that onto here. And you can see where all the sewing is, and that's fine by me. So this gives me lots of journaling space here, like that. And the reason I was sewing these was because I wouldn't have to worry about making sure that I catch like this little envelope where I put the stitches in. Because if I use a pamphlet stitch, there's only going to be three, three stitches, well, two stitches, three holes. And I wanted to make sure that the little pieces, you know, got in there okay. So this was then the first piece, and then this is going to go in 
I like this orange with these leaves over here and the orange with the donuts. I like all that together. And then what I do is like these big white pages, these will not get finished until I journal in the journal. I only do so much to the journal and I leave a lot of blank pages because sometimes when I'm doing a page, depending on the subject, I want to start with a blank slate. I want to build it from the bottom up. So I have these blank pages and I do that on purpose. So some have something on the background, some are blank and some are just fun to play with. And then to finish off the first signature, I made one more Franken paper here. And I took this purple paper and again, I folded it so one side was large and the other side was only that wide. And I did sew on, you can see these two lines in the middle. Now, if you don't sew, glue, glue, glue. All right, I just happen to love to sew paper. So I sewed it on and I put two lines of stitches to make sure that it wasn't all wobbly. And then the other stitches are from the ribbon. I didn't trim this ribbon, did I? Are from the ribbon. And this is another Dollar Tree ribbon. I bought this last year, brand new in the package, never opened it. And I'm like, all right, let's use it. This is wired ribbon, and I do take the wires out before I sew. I just love this with the witch's hats, and it's purple, and it's orange and green. So, you know, fun, fun, fun here. Mixing everything up. Now, this is going to get covered, but again, I'm not going to cover it until I'm actually journaling in the journal. Then I will decide what goes on it. I will save those paper packs. I'll put them aside to finish this journal off next year. And then this is from the Naturally Scary. I just loved it. Cabinet of Curiosities and Oddities. And I thought I would make that the center fold. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, if you want to count the deli paper, seven, eight, if you want to count the donut box, nine, ten, which is a lot, but some of them are shorter, so I think that'll work for me. So this is going to be the first signature right there. There's my clock, as always, my morning dove. So I am working on the second signature tonight, and again, I started with a Dollar Tree paper bag, and I put the leaves on the back. So the leaves will end the journal and they'll start the journal. So you can see I just took a piece of this, I folded it over, I stitched it onto the paper bag, you can glue, and I stitched around the edge. You might wanna glue it somehow, or put a paper in there to glue it to. I kinda liked it being kinda airy. I don't know, I don't know how it's gonna work. It's an experiment, I don't know but it looked like fun. I was like, ooh, this will be different. I thought this was kind of interesting, and since it was, you know, on sale, I figured, well, let's go for it. And you know, I have a lot of tools and things, you know, that I've been buying, like at the Dollar Tree, you know, this kind of stuff. But this is very, this is like net, you know? Where this is burlap. I mean, this is like an actual page that I could journal on. So I thought that was pretty cool. So now I'm doing some papers. And on this page, this is upside down. This, <laughs> this is a grave rubbing I did a couple years ago. And it's done on rice paper by you put it on the grave and you rub and you get the design. I was using crayons and special crayons that are made just for rubbings and different things. I stitched this on with some purple thread. I stitched it down to some gray paper, but I left one side open. I'm not sure what I'll be doing with those pages, but it doesn't matter. I took some more gray paper. Maybe that's too much gray in a row. I don't know, but I added this purple to kind of break that up. I love this sort of mauve purple 
a tone on tone here with the gray. And I did do a Franken page back here. Again, I took this from an old pack of paper. You know, I think I bought two of these. I, I loved it so much because it had purple elephants in it. And I bought two of them. And you know what? No matter how much I love a pack of paper, I'm never buying two again. Because as soon as I use one pack of paper, I'm like, oh, move on to something new and exciting. Don't really need two packs of anything. I'd rather get two different kinds. Again, two rows of stitches to hold the two layers of paper together. And then one roll of stitches for the ribbon on there. This is nice because it's double-sided though. So I only need to put a piece of paper there. And more Dollar Tree ribbon, I believe. So these are done. So I've got one, two, one, two, three, four, four. Wow. So I need like six more, six more. I don't know if I can get that all done tonight. It's a lot of work sewing all these papers and everything. Oh, wait, I got this one. Again, Franken paper. I took two calendar pages with a strip of Tyvek and I used the beacon glue and I put them together and it's gonna go this way. So let's stick those in here. Let's see. Where should I put these? I'll just put them in here, it doesn't matter. All right, that's another page done. And if I put some deli paper, that's another page done. <laughs> okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So now we got six, I only need four more. So maybe another um, scrapbook page, another scrapbook page, another one of these deals, or a big envelope might be nice. These are old calendars. All right, so let me grab some more paper and see what I can put in here. Okay, I'm grabbing more paper from this pack, which I think I got this at the flea market or a yard sale, Mango Frost. And I don't have too much of it left and it's kind of orangey. So I've been using up some for this journal. And I'm going to put all these, when I cut down the pages, I'm going to put all these scraps together like this because these will be available then when I go ahead and do the pages. I'll have all these cut off pieces to decorate some pages. So I will keep these all together. There'll be more before I'm done, but I'm trying to stay organized here. Here's one floating around. So let's keep everything in there. Like I said, because the pages don't really get their decorating until I journal. Okay, that's on the floor. I think this one I am going to I could sew. Or maybe I'll make this, um, yeah, maybe I'll make this one a pocket. I think I will sew it on three sides. So what I had done is I had taken this paper, I cut it to full size, so it would be full size this way, and a little bit folded over there. But that's not much to journal on. So I took another piece, cut it full size. And when I say full size, I mean, you know, full size to fit in here. So it's full size, size of the journal like that. 
And if I just sew this on three sides and leave it like that, I think I'm gonna do that. And that gives me four full-size, well, three full-size sheets to journal on and one full-size with a pre-made pocket. So I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Okay. This 12 by 12, I just folded it over and folded it over. And I was thinking of sewing it and making pockets, but I'm thinking maybe I'll leave it the whole thing open. And if I put it down at the bottom, you know, I can have something sticking up out of it. And instead of using just half of it, I'm going to use the whole thing so it's decorated on both sides. See, and I'll put this red paper there. And that'll be like that. That'll be one. That'll be two. Could put this little paper in between. I'm not sure what I'm going to put on this deli paper yet, but... I'll think of something. I may have to sew this though. These three together. So that it comes out right. The so one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay, now what I need is something nice for the middle. Let me grab my paper packs again. Okay, I just found this guy. And this is out of a book, obviously. And he would make an awesome page. I wonder... Paper's pretty thick. Hmm. If I cut this down, I wish this was brown on both sides. If I cut this down to the largest size and cut that down to fit there, then I'll have to trim it a little bit, but I can glue it on the brown side. Probably measure this to eight and a half. And I don't want it any bigger than that. So that's where I gotta fold it right there. I know there's a lot of pink and bright orange. You know, when I say haunted house, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's the cover. <laughs> that's not the inside. I was thinking of doing haunted house with, you know, the paper that looked like wallpaper and try to make rooms and all that stuff. But, you know, that's more like constructing a haunted house than just making a cover for a journal that I'm going to be journaling in, which is, you know, what I'm more interested in doing. Do I need to break? So I kind of like this all together. For some reason, it's kind of like a set. So if I, you know, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Everything has to work together. You know 
want, or do I want it to go this way? I could put this in the middle. If I have to lose part of this, I'm going to lose the bottom because I'm going to keep that skull. So I'm going to cut this to size. I'll probably cut this out. And I'm going to glue it down to here. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put on that side. This is really pretty. This might have to go with this because I'm going to have to cut off some of this scroll business down here, but yet this looks like a scroll and it's got a serpent and a toad, some flowers, almost like a potions recipe. And maybe I'll make it not quite as big as that one, but pretty big, maybe a little bit smaller, maybe maybe about this is eight and a half maybe about six and a half inches and maybe I'll just sew it on maybe I'll glue it on I'll just glue it on like that just glue the whole thing down like that because then I can cover this with something oh I got another book page here Mm. This could be the other side, couldn't it? Well, if I use this, I'll make it big. Ordinary folk huddled fearfully in their beds when with a rush of wind and a squirrel of laughter, witches coursed the nighttime sky. Very interesting woodcut. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do and then I'll come back. I'm gonna trim this, put him down here. I am going to put this opposite him like that and glue that on there and then glue that down on there okay so we have these two pieces of paper put together book page put on top you can see this seam there where I put the two together and I did just glue everything so far and now I'm going to glue this book page on here like that, pretty creepy, huh? And then I think, I thought I'd get this done tonight, but it's getting late. So I'll probably wrap it up for this All Hallows Eve Eve and finish these signatures tomorrow, which is All Hallows Eve. So we're on the eve of All Hallows' Eve. Something lumpy under there somewhere. And all I need to do is find a couple more things. I want to go digging through my trash, my trashy stashy, and find something, you know, maybe another envelope or... You know, I have a box of donuts and the other signature, something. Find something trashy to put in here. Because all I need is a couple more pages. Then I could show you how I'm going to put it together. And then if I have time tomorrow, I could work on decorating my haunted house. And that would be very appropriate for Halloween. Putting a little extra tacky glue around the edge. And where's my little scraper card? Well, this is a book page, so it probably won't curl up. I'm 
get it? So there's my centerpiece, my witch on the back. These will get done later, like I said. So, so far, this is the second signature. I'll probably sew these together somehow so that I can, don't have to worry about them when I'm sewing by hand. That'll go in there like that somehow. Somehow, somehow. My calendar. I love these three together. And then that's going to be the middle. Oh, I didn't show you the other side of the paper. Which is here. When I said I would go over and sew three sides and make the pocket. Came out really nice. Like that. And the back with the burlap. And this is the first signature. And I will sew these in by hand. And then this part will be done and ready for journaling for next year. Because I already have one I'm doing this year. I want to finish that one up. And then I will be working on the haunted house itself. And that'll get glued down. So I just want to thank you for coming along today. Happy junk journaling. Happy Halloween. Bye-bye.